All right, guys, let's finish building this hand wheel. All right, so if you guys have an interest in machine work and specifically old machinery, uh, why don't you click on the uh, old horizontal mill icon down in the corner and subscribe. It's free, and I've got a whole bunch more videos. We need to put a uh, 5 16 18 hole in here, drilled. And uh, this is kind of a funky setup I've got here, but I've got a, uh, a uh, tapered parallel underneath the bottom of this, so it'll take up any thrust on this. And I've got it lined up as best I can here to drill. There's a keyway straight below this, and the set screw is going to sit on the keyway. So we're going to drill a pilot hole, and then it's a uh, letter F. That's as far as I can go with that. All right, so you can see I've, I've filed a little flat on there so this drill bit don't walk down this face, but now that we've got a pilot hole in there, I think we should be okay. All right, here we go with our letter F drill. That should be all the way through now. I'm gonna drive it into that bar a little bit just to make sure I can cut threads all the way through the key. All right. All right. That looks like it's all the way down. So let's uh let's get this thing out of here and have a look and see. well we've done all righty well there's our hole so now we're gonna have to go find a tap and run the tap through there all right I got my tap set up here it means this is cast iron really shouldn't need to put any lubricant on here there's a lot of free graphite and cast iron and I don't have any good way of holding this center, so I'm just gonna try to do it freehand here. Be careful. Oh, yeah. I might need to tighten that up a little bit more. I got that thing in there tight properly now. Thought I had it good enough, but I guess I didn't. All right. Now we're about where we were a minute ago. Oh, this is nice soft iron. Cuts really good. full thread it's a taper tap so you know first few threads there quite a few th threads are actually not at full depth that's good it takes a lot of the cutting pressure off too so it makes it easier to run it all right let's get our set screw and see how that fits in there It's real good. All right, so here's my bar. You can see I've got a little divot drilled in there. I've got another one here, and that, that's for a upcoming operation. The first thing I want to do is uh, I want to face off the end of the hub to length. There it is. Oh, forget my own head if I didn't have it attached. But anyway, 
So uh, the set screw is going to be a little too short since it's going to be sitting down that divot and not on the keyway, right? So I just put a longer screw in here and we're going to just fix that to this bar in that divot. Alright, that's in there. Find my wrench. Tighten this guy up. And let me tell you what, this thing is uh, pretty tricky. I can't fit a caliper in here. Uh, micrometer, if I had a really deep throat one, I might be able to get that in there, but that's kind of a little awkward too. So what I think I'm going to try doing is put it up against a chuck and uh, hopefully I can use a scale. I'll get myself set up where I can come off of the, the surface of this jaw. We'll set this up against the face of the chuck. And uh, I think I can probably measure it pretty easily that way. The last go around I had to kind of was a little hit and miss and trial and error. So hopefully this works a little bit better. All right, so like I said, this is a really fussy thing to try to set up. But uh, it's one and three sixteenths as this hub is supposed to be. So I was able to squeeze my rule in here and kind of line it up by eye. And I've got a, I've got a stop set up over here, a hard stop. So all I'm going to do is just start facing this off and just keep going until I get to that hard stop. And that's it. And everything clears. And we don't have, uh, can I squeeze my rule in here? There ain't a lot of room here. But uh, we've got clearance. And uh, let's get to it, I guess. Safety glasses. I'm going to back out here. That looks like it cleaned up pretty good. I'm gonna run this in the center, so never hurts to uh, put a little bit of CMD extreme pressure lube in the uh, in the hole here. That will help prevent wear on the bar and on the uh, center. Well, I'll try to set up some uh, paper here so we can keep as much of this cast iron shavings off of the the ways as we can. So it's just a piece of a uh, couple pieces of paper towels. And I got some uh, rare earth magnets here. They came in these little boxes, but the nice thing is you can kind of stick them down. See, a little chips laying on there. Stick one over there, one over here, and then yeah, it's like billows, right? All right. So let's zoom you in, and I'll uh, explain how we're going to be doing this cut here. So this looks to be like a pretty good round surface, um, but you know I've got a I've got a radius gauge here. This is a 1530 seconds radius, which is the closest thing. It's a little it's a little bit too big, but uh, seven sixteenths is too small, so it's kind of somewhere in between there. Um, but when I put it on here, and it, uh, you know I'm trying to find a way to show you on the camera, but I'm I'm not having any luck but i can see there's actually like a high point here and a high point there that it's sitting on so what i'm deducing by this is that they uh you know they faced off the edges and got the outside diameter pretty close and then they did some chamfers on here and i think this is just filed to shape and that's the way i did the the first one that i made and it came out looking really nice you know once you're done with the filing, you know, polish it with a little bit of emery paper and boy, it really cleans up good. So we're gonna just kind of use this gauge as kind of a ballpark thing, just to kind of keep us on track so we don't get too crazy. But, so that's how we're gonna do it. And I'm sure that that's exactly the way Brown and Sharp did it originally. Uh, labor was cheap, you know. All right, let's uh, see if we can take a cut here and get this thing trued up a little bit. It's gonna be pretty interrupted here, so. Hopefully everything is good and tight, not too much trouble. All right, that's cut all the way around. 
see what the uh, calipers are saying if we're close to six inches. This is really not a critical measurement here. Uh, try to be kind of close, I guess. Uh, looks like we're about forty thousands over. I guess we can we can cut a little bit more. That's about five over. I guess we can just dial in that and make one last cut. Yeah, we got a little bit of a, a bit of a hole right there. I think pretty sure that'll clean up though once we get the fastening that stuff off of there. close enough all right now we're gonna have to swivel this around so we can face off this side a little bit so the uh, original hand wheel it measures uh, just about 850 thousandths across here and we're at uh, one inch 20 um, the other one I made uh, it was a little bit wider but you know not a big deal I think it was I don't know what nine 875 or something like that so let's let's trim this down and the main thing here I've got this little boss right here that's for uh, the hand wheel mounts to that so we definitely cannot cut past that and I want to leave sort of more or less a similar you know um, step of the uh, machining allowance on there so it'll it'll look like the original ones did All right, well, that's uh, about 910, but we're starting to run out of uh, allowance on this stock here, so we're gonna just call it right there. So we've set the compound here at 30 degrees this way here, and we're gonna start cutting this side a little bit. And we'll do the other side too. I know I'm kind of flip-flopping back and forth a lot, but I kind of want to do it sort of evenly. So I'm gonna cut a 30 degree chamfer here, and then a 30 degree on this side, and then we're gonna go to 45 and kind of Keep checking it with our our little gauge here and kind of see that kind of is just fitting on there sort of a little bit so of course obviously there's uh, i guess you guys can't see it up there so this is kind of fitting up here we'll keep checking with this gauge and uh try to get it looking really nice All right, we got that 30 degrees cut there, and it looks like we got rid of all the scale finally on that. That little pit still right here, but that's right on the point, so I'm pretty confident now that that's going to get cut off. All right, let's chamfer this side at 30. I think that will do for the 30 degrees on that side. All 
All right, I think that's about got it for the 45. There's a little tiny, little, little tiniest little bit of, you know, the original surface finish right on that corner. That'll be gone for sure, so that's not a problem. All right, let's cut our 45 on this side now. All right, so we got all those cuts made on here. So now when I set this gauge on here, I'll try to set it so you guys can see, but you can see we're kind of pretty much just sitting on some points and there's flats, of course, but uh, we've more or less roughed out this profile. So now what we really just got to do is file this thing, you know, into a nice curve, sort of blend it together and then uh, we'll be sanding it, polish it up, and uh, I believe we'll just about have this hand wheel done. All right, got a pretty coarse file here. I really, I should find myself a, a lathe file, but this is the one I got. You know, you always see a lot of guys like going real slow with the file, but this is moving really fast. I mean, I, I'm not sure what the surface heat per minute is, but it's pretty quick, a lot faster than a person average files. Uh, those, them teeth are gonna load up real quick if you sit in there in one spot. Uh, you need to keep it, keep that file moving. All right, that's looking really good. Well, I was looking all over the shop and I could not find any emery paper anywhere, but uh, I got plenty of this 220 sandpaper around here. Let's let's see if this will shine this stuff up. We've got a pretty reasonable finish here from the file now, so hopefully. Looks to be pretty smooth to me, so let's uh, let's jump up to some 400 grit. So in the pattern, I actually put a center point when I filled the hole in the original casting. So uh, you know that that's handy to do. So now I know right where I need to drill my hole, and more or less this drill bit shouldn't wander. So we're gonna go ahead and drill an eighth-inch pilot hole, and then. Uh, Jump up to five sixteenths. Then we're gonna have to counterbore it. Although I don't have a counterbore. So we're just gonna have to use a little bit larger bit. Alright, that's all the way through on that one. Like I said, I don't have any counter bores, but uh, you know, I don't really think this is super critical stuff here. We're just trying to hold a crank handle on. Uh, this is uh, 15 30 seconds, which just is a clearance for that. So we're gonna kind of peck at it a little bit and we'll check when this head sits more or less flush in there, and then we're gonna call that good. Hmm. That's going to be a little bit of an issue, isn't it? 
we lowered this table down, so. All right, well, instead of lowering the table, I was able to chuck up just a little bit higher on the drill bit, so now I can stick my, stick this guy down in there, and we can kind of check it. All right, let's get back to this. Hmm, that don't seem very straight. Oh yeah, and loose screw. All right, well, let me find that. We'll be right back, figure out what's wrong with that drill bit. All right, well, I kind of got down on the flutes, I guess, a little bit when I chucked it up higher. And uh, I don't know, I think that was making it run out a little bit. The screw does not quite clear underneath that right now, but I think when the head fits, I think it might just drop in. So we're gonna have to turn it on and off to check it. Clear now, we still gotta go maybe almost another eighth. Okay, just a touch. All right, that looks pretty good. That'll be fine. All right, guys. This is the uh, crank handle. This one here, as well as the other one, were, were both broken off whenever the hand wheels were broken. Uh, but uh, I got another video. I'll put a link to it up here in the corner. Uh, you can see how I did the repairs on these. Um, it wasn't actually that difficult, but... Uh, you know, it'd sure be easy for somebody to, you know, just throw them away and make one. These are somewhat interesting in that uh, I don't think it was actually really machined. It was sort of cast because it's kind of, it's not perfectly cylindrical. So they probably just cast them, polished them up, grabbed them in a chuck and did all this drilling work and, you know, made this part here kind of more or less precision. But uh, this whole knob end is very irregular, really. Anyway. Let's go ahead and put this thing on. Bolt up in there. All right, that seems to fit pretty good. All right, all right, there it is. It's finished except for paint. Right, if you guys uh, enjoy these videos, why don't you share them to somebody that you think would like them and uh, check out the ones that will be popping up here shortly in the bottom.